All right, we're now going to talk about intellectual property and go through three main ways which it can be protected in the UK. So copyright, patents and trademarks. A lot to get through, it's a very complicated topic. So we're going to just touch the surface here and try and define these terms. But the relevant law for intellectual property in the UK is the Copyright Designs and Patents Act of 1988. There are other laws which are connected, but this is the, uh, the main one to be aware of. And it's designed to protect what is known as intellectual property, shortened often just to IP. And it's protecting it from being stolen is the idea. So these are creations of the mind, is the phrase often used. It's quite hard to define, to be honest. So really anything you're coming up with, with your brain. So things like articles and magazines, digital art, films, songs, and software, and so on. Even hardware designs, things like this. Things which you are coming up with yourself and are different from other people's ideas. So we're talking about ideas here, not about physical products, although they often lead to physical products. So without protection from the law like the Copyright Designs and Patents Act, it makes these things very, very easy to steal. Stealing physical items is, I'm sure, relatively difficult, right? Stealing a car, stealing money from a bank, takes quite a lot of effort, I would imagine. But if stealing somebody's idea is very easy, somebody could tell you a story and you could steal it. Somebody could tell you a film idea and you could steal it. So without protection, easy to steal. And if they are easy to steal and there is no punishment, you might find in time, people who are creative may not take the time and money to innovate. People might stop trying to come up with new ideas and new concepts and new art and new software ideas because there is no punishment, right? People will not bother to make new video games or films or art if a competitor is able just to steal it right after it's been made. And so it is really important for intellectual property to be protected and for organisations to be quite careful in how they use other IP and how they go about protecting their own IP. So the first term which we need to cover is copyright. So copyright is an interesting one because you get copyright automatically, right? If you produce an original product, you get copyright straight away. So there's no application. You can assert copyright on anything you do. You can make a story and if it is totally yours, totally original, you can stick a copyright symbol, which is what the C is in the circle and assert that it was your original idea. Often it's phrased, or often it's written as the symbol, the year it was made in, and the company or the person's name afterwards. So that's from YouTube, that picture. Now what copyright does is prevent other people copying, giving away, or selling your work without your permission. Because Google have said YouTube is their own original work, I can't make a clone of YouTube and pass it off as my own. That would fall foul of copyright, and I'm sure Google would come after me with a big lawsuit. Now, there are some exemptions to copyright, and I, I cannot claim to fully understand the total legal intricacies. Not that we need to, of course. But exemptions are things like education, and the government have some exemptions too. But also, after a set number of years, actually, the copyright effectively expires, and IP can start to enter the public domain. So the public domain is the idea that after a certain number of years, usually 70, after the death of the person who made it, it becomes pretty much public and it's very hard to restrict it anymore. So that's why famous paintings and famous novels, which are over 70 years old, start to appear more often because you are free to use them without much threat of legal action. Now a similar but different concept in IP are trademarks. A trademark exists to protect a brand, not just the general idea. So a brand is where we have a type of product associated really strongly with a particular name and organization. Right, there are certain logos and certain slogans and certain color schemes we all recognize as being part of a particular company or associated with a particular person. That's a brand, they're really quite strong. So we often see like a TM, a TM is short for trademark. So the TM symbol shows that a brand is the organization's original IP. You can also register it, so T TM, anyone can stick a TM after a, a name or a slogan or something like that. But if you've got an R, that means it's a registered trademark, which means the company has applied to the government and has formally registered it, so they've actually proved that it is their own IP. Um, but TM on its own is not necessarily proved. So to give an example, right, Cocoa Pops 
is a very, very strong brand belonging to Kellogg's. And so the name Cocoa Pops, because it is something which Kellogg's have come up with, they can stick a tiny R symbol after it. They've applied for a registered trademark. Um, and so it is their own brand name. It means another company cannot use that particular brand name because it's got its own trademark. So Tesco, with their clone of Cocoa Pops, cannot use the same name, but of course they can use a similar name because it's different to them. Now, they haven't, it looks like, got a trademark for this, possibly because that's risking legal action from Kellogg's because it could be seen as being too close otherwise. But the actual product is, I think we can agree, pretty identical, but the trademark is what needs to be kept distinct because it's Kellogg's intellectual property. Patents are the third and final term to cover, which are different still from copyright and trademarks because patents you must apply to the government and they're much more about unique ideas, which are what we call inventions. An invention is something brand new which hasn't been discovered or thought about, is the idea. So a patent is this legal right which gives exclusive rights over a fixed period of time, usually about 20 years. So the government have said, okay, this is a unique idea, you can have a patent, you can do what you want with this idea for usually 20 years. To give an example, Apple in America in 2021 registered a patent for a underscreen fingerprint scanner for iPhones and MacBooks. How they managed to prove this was unique, I'm not quite sure because that's the whole idea, you are proving it is an invention. Probably it's not so much about the actual final result, probably more about the technology going on inside. But having a patent means Apple can scrutinize competitors, and if Apple feels that a competitor has got a very, very similar design to their product, Apple could sue them, and it gives them more control over this idea. Again, the kind of reasoning behind it is, Apple could spend millions and millions of pounds and loads of time coming up with a brand new idea only for another company to steal it. So that's the purpose of patents, to stop somebody stealing an idea, but you've got to prove it's unique enough to be brand new. And patents you have to apply for, so trademarks and copyright can just be, you can just say you've got copyright or it's got a trademark, um, but a patent has to be registered, which is quite costly, and a lot of patents get turned down as well. Now a fun thing to mention applies to all three of our key terms, so copyright, trademarks and patents. That's all about what you should be doing if you want to use somebody else's IP legally and ethically. So the three main things you should be doing, and really it will be often a combination of these three. So it may not be all three at once, it might be one or two or just one of them at a time, because they do all overlap and connect. So the first thing you should do if you want to use somebody else's IP is try and obtain permission. That's much more of an ethical thing to do. So ask them if they're okay with it. If they are okay with you using it, that means down the line they will not try and sue you, is the key idea. But also ethically, it just is a good thing to do, to check that the person is okay with you using their IP. Now a license is a sort of slightly more formal version of just general permission. It's where you often buy a license and it gives you formal permission, so it's a contract really, to be able to use that product or that idea in a certain way. Often with conditions, it might say you are able to use it for two years, or you are able to modify it, or you are able to sell it on, giving a commission to the original person, stuff like that, right? A condition which determines how the IP should be used. If you have ever installed software, you would have seen and possibly skipped uh, checking the license agreement, which gives you conditions to using that bit of software. And the final thing which is often required from a license or required from just getting permission is giving attribution to the creator. Attribution is just giving credit, basically. So saying who it belongs to, giving a reference to the person so people are not under the impression it's just your original IP. And if you don't do any of these things, it could definitely lead to legal action and that costs a lot of money. You could get fined, you could get sued, and you could be prevented from doing whatever you're doing by a court.